I'll hand the word to Brother Leandro, as in the name of the Lord, or to Jesus. I greet every brother, the ones who are participating with us in this service tonight, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the brethren so that we may open our Bibles in the Gospel of John, John 4, chapter 4, John chapter 4, we're going to read verses 41 and 42 of this chapter. Gospel according to John, chapter 4, verse 41 and 42, thus says the word of the Lord, and many more believe because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord Father, we want to already glorify and praise your holy name for the opportunity of offering this service to you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for being able to sing songs to you, and we ask, Father, bless us as we meditate on your word, visiting our hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. My brethren, the text that we just read speaks about one of the many wonders performed by the Lord. It speaks about an experience that the Lord has given, especially to the life of a woman, but also to a city. And the text that we read, was, it, is, it speaks about a moment in which the Lord Jesus has a meeting with a woman in the well of Jacob. It is a text that is pretty well known, and we know there that Jesus, at that moment, he passed by that location, and the Word tells us that he finds that woman. That woman went out there to pick up water. And the Word says that he made a request to this woman, tell me something to drink. And it's interesting that that woman, when she heard, when she heard that request, she says, how can you ask that to me, since you are you are Jewish and I'm a Samaritan. And those people, they had uh, lived in disagreement. There was a difference, a disagreement between them. But at that moment, Lord Jesus began to reveal himself to that woman. And there, Jesus reveals to himself to that woman as being the source of waters. And the word in verse 10, he speaks to that woman that way. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. At that moment, there was a product that was, has been established to that woman at that moment. And it is a product that for us is a mystery, is a project of salvation. And that had been determined in eternity that on that day, the Lord Jesus was going to speak in that way to that woman. And the objective there was that that woman would know not the Jesus as a man, but that she would recognize Jesus as being the Christ, the Savior. The Word tells us that the dialogue between the woman and the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus begins to show to that woman that he knew the life of that woman, and he reveals to that woman what was hidden in, the, in her heart, and through his word, he shows to her that he knew her heart, and more than that, and he introduces himself as being the Savior. And it is interesting that Jesus speaks to that woman in a certain moment when she asks, what is the right location where she should pr praise him? The Lord Jesus says that there was going to be a, a time where the Spirit was going to seek the true worshipers. And at that moment, that woman then understands that the Lord Jesus 
was the Christ, the Son of God. And from that moment forward, that woman had, has her life transformed. And the word says that immediately she goes back to the city and she begins to proclaim what she had heard about the Lord Jesus. She begins to proclaim what, how that man had told her, explained to her everything that was hidden in her life and how that man has spoken to her with wisdom and words of power. So much that the people of that city, when they heard that story, they make an invitation for Jesus to enter the city and stay with them. So then Jesus goes, and at that place, he proclaims the gospel. My brethren, it's very interesting because the project of salvation for the life of man is, is like this. There's a moment in our lives in which the Lord Jesus comes to us. A moment which is known the act, the moment in which the Lord Jesus looks to our lives, not because of our merits, because if we look to that woman, she's an example of somebody that was undeserving, but because God's infinite mercy. And he looks to that man, and the man's heart is revealed. And Jesus does, did that to our lives. Jesus one day looked to each one of us. He looked to our situation. He looked to our heart. And he revealed himself to us. There was a project that was designed by the Lord Father in eternity that we would have this meeting with Jesus. And it's interesting that this woman, when she heard those words, immediately she understands and she leaves everything behind and she goes back to her home, to her city. And there she says, I found the Christ. I found the one who's coming to save the life of man. My brethren, that's the experience. When we hear the voice of the Lord, when we hear the word of the Lord and our hearts is transformed, our lives are transformed. And my brethren, that woman that was seek, seeking to pick up water, she forgot what was her physical need and she understood that she had already found a, a much more precious uh, good for her life. And my brethren, that's wonderful because it shows to us what is the project of God for the life of man. But we read two verses tonight that speak, that point out for the direction of the people of that city. The word says that Jesus entered there, he begins to proclaim, and on the verse that we read, these people say something very interesting. It says, when they speaking to that woman, now we believe not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard him and he know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. My brethren, how amazing it is, how wonderful it is when we realize that. Because those men, they, he, they had not experienced, had the same experience that this woman had had. That woman had a dialogue with Jesus and Jesus revealed what was hidden in the life of that woman. But those men, they had truly heard the voice of the Savior. My brethren, when we see this expression that they use, we no longer believe, but because of what you have said, we can understand that this is the great secret of, of salvation of man. Because having experience with the Lord Jesus is something wonderful, it's something that is necessary. It is what comes from the part of the Lord. But living with the Lord is something different. Because the Lord no, don't, doesn't call us to have an isolated experience, but to have a life of dedication to our, at the feet of our Savior. Those men had heard the testimony of that woman. How wonderful it was. You heard, have met somebody that told you something that was hidden. And many times, if you look to the salvation of men, or to each one of us, we may have gone, come into the presence of the Lord because something that we may have heard from an experience that someone close to us told us, or maybe even through a blessing that we may have received, a healing, a professional blessing, a deliverance, an open door. And this is wonderful when the Lord Jesus he reveals himself to the life of man. But my brethren, the project of salvation is much more than only that moment in which the Lord is, reveals himself to us. The project of salvation for men is when we hear the voice of the Lord every day. 
when those men, they said that they no longer believe what she had spoken about, but because of what Jesus was proclaiming, they were there saying, we also had a meeting with our Savior. We also recognize that truly this man is the Christ, the, the Son of God, the one who came to redeem and to reach our lives. And my brethren, that experience that those men had, that war that was brought to those men, demonstrate the experience of a redeemed soul. What the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, that the moment was going to come in which the true worshipers would worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, was being fulfilled in, in the life of those men. Because there they were understanding that the one who was speaking, the one who was with them, is the one who could give eternal life. And at that moment, those men, they gave themselves to the Lord. They no longer looked to the difference that existed between the Samaritan and Jews. They no longer cared about what those this man was speaking. But now they were concerned with the war that came from their eternity to their lives. My brethren, tonight the Lord has called us to participate on this service because the Lord wants to remind us. The Lord wants to remind us of who is the God to whom we serve. The Lord wants to remind us that one day we had a meeting with the Lord Jesus. The Lord had a project in our lives. My brethren, surely each one of us who are here participating in this service tonight, each one of us who are watching this service, is part of a project of God in eternity. We are all part of a project of salvation. That's why you're here. And the, the Lord wants to remind us, my brethren, that what was given to us, what was given to us, the experience of salvation, is the most valuable gift that we have. And the Lord wants to show us that His desire is that we may continue to hear the voice, the word of the Lord Jesus in the same way as those men said. We should not live on, off of experiences from the past or experience from somebody that somebody that told us to, their experience. We as servants of the Lord has, have to have an experience renewed every day in the presence of our Savior because we don't serve a God that is dead. We serve a living God, a God that is beside us. A God that know the need of our hearts. We serve a God that hear the supplication, the plea, and answer to our prayers. My brethren, the, the God that we serve is not a God that we heard about some, somewhere, but it's a God that revealed Himself to our lives. A God that sent His Son, Lord Jesus, to die for the love of each one of us. A God that removed us from this world. A God that delivered from sin a God that transformed our lives, and a God that prepared eternity for, so that we can live with Him. An eternity of God it is something that is prepared for each one of us. That's my brethren. It doesn't matter what we are going through in this world. It doesn't matter what we are going through. We walk together with our Savior towards eternity. And this is our greatest gift. It is our greatest plea. And my brethren, it is important that every day this experience may be renewed in our hearts. The Lord has shown through the spiritual gifts that there were lives with us that were participating, life that had already had experience with the Lord, lives that know the Lord, but lives that has gone astray from the Lord, have not been able to achieve this experience they have not had this word with the Lord in my brethren tonight the Lord wants, is telling that he wants to renew our lives because our God is a merciful God and is, is a God that wants all of us to have access to the salvation and the Lord has shown through with regard to the life of a couple in the gift the Lord was showing that this couple is like was a couple that was had a, a fountain of water in front of the house and the ones who were living around them they know this but in fact the gift was showing that this couple in spite of having this fountain of water in front of the house this couple was dehydrated they have not drank from this water they have not participated of what is in front of them and the lord has shown that tonight angels were being sent 
to the family of this couple to fight on behalf of that couple. Because, my brethren, that's how the Lord looks to each one of us, the love of God towards, li towards our lives is the reason why we are not destroyed. It's because of this love that Jesus every day reminds us that we have been called to participate, uh, be part of a people that we will inherit eternally. And because of this love that the Lord reminds us that He sent His Son to die for us on the cross, and the Lord wants to speak to this couple that the Lord wants to touch on your heart, on the heart of both of you. The Lord wants to restore your lives. The Lord also has shown another spiritual gift. He is speaking about a woman. This woman was also sinking water. It is interesting that the Lord speaks in a wonderful way. The Lord was there showing that this woman was seeking for water in a well, but she was not able to reach the water. But this, but this well was a dry well. And she was questioned, well, I drank from this well before. Why is this, dry, this well dry? And the word was speaking to her that this well was dry because she stopped seeking the Lord. And my brethren, the well, which is the Lord Jesus, he never goes dry. But we, many times, because of everything that happens to our lives, because of the concerns, because of the trials, many times we grow colder and we stop seeking this living water. But tonight, the Lord wants to speak to each one of us that He has chosen us to be part of this people. We have learned in Sunday schools about the moment in which we are leaving. And the moment in which we are leaving is a moment where we need to make a definition. We need to be at the God's feet seeking the Lord. The signs are being fulfilled. When we see around at us, we realize that everything that has been prophesied on word is being fulfilled in our days. And we glorify the Lord. Because in the midst of all of what happens, we know that we are walking towards eternity with God. And we know that the signs, they come to alert a people, a people that discern what is happening, that discerns the moment, so that to alert his people that Jesus will soon come to take his church. My brethren, that was an opportunity to that people. Was it the opportunity for those men? And they did not reject the word. They did not cling to what this woman had, had told them. But they heard the word that Jesus told them. They had a true meeting with the Lord and Savior. So may us, all of us tonight, have a true meeting with our Savior. And that we may allow that this Jesus, the one who died for us on the cross, may God is and that this word, this word, this living word from eternity may guide us so that we may be living with him eternally. We're going to praise the name of the Lord with another song. Glorify our God.
Aleluia. Meu irmão, no verso 25. So this chapter, a woman makes a statement. I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus answers, I who speak to you am he. My brethren, the opportunity that was given to each one of us, this is the God that has spoken to us. Is the God that wants to touch on your life and wants to restore your heart tonight. Place before Him your life so that He may give you this experience and renew the exp your experience of salvation in your heart. We're going to still have at this moment a word of glorification and afterwards one of the pastors can take on to bring the service to a close. I want to praise you, Lord, because of your presence, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because it doesn't matter the circumstance that we may be going through, these difficult days, none of it matters. But what matters is the love of the Lord upon our lives. What matters is your promise of salvation and that one day we will we'll be with the Lord in eternity. We praise you, Lord, because you are a God of miracles. Your God that every day has been with us. We have not lacked anything, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Because we are we don't have words to express how great you are, how great is the love of the of the Lord towards our lives. We praise you, Lord, for everything. Because one day, Lord, we will be with, with you in eternity. We praise you, Lord, for this fount that flows waters of li that flows living waters and has quenched our thirst Lord every day you have renewed our lives Lord we praise you for this privilege that we have of knowing the Lord of knowing Lord your word of knowing Lord this so great love we praise you for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus amen My brethren, peace of the Lord. Amen. Truly, we are privileged because we have the Lord at our disposal. As the Word mentioned, and we have this fount that was opened up on Calvary. This fount is the Lord Jesus. Oh, willingness. We're privileged because at our disposal, every moment, we praise you, the Lord, because this word brings comfort to us. We're privileged because we have the means to praise, pray to the, our Lord in the name of Jesus and have an answer, be answered by this great Lord. Let's pray as we close the service. Lord, receive the adoration that was made tonight, the praises that were sang, the, the, ma the prayers that were made, the request of prayers, of reconciliation. And Lord, we ask that tonight we may put a stamp with your spirit every phase of this service that we are offering to you, Lord, and that we tonight we may confirm our blessing and that we may leave this place loving more your kingdom and the salvation Jesus. Give us a night of rest, Lord, so that your word may remain in our hearts. The prayer they say, I'm really thankful. In the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Remember, brethren, I've come to the end of yet another service. We ask the brethren to continue to pray for the health of everyone, of our family members, so that the Lord may preserve our physical health and much more our spiritual health 
we're going through difficult moments. Nothing seems to be getting better. So ask the brethren to be careful. Everything that you are already doing, you already know, let's not take risks. Soon it will be over. Soon we'll be together in church. And soon we'll be able to greet one another. So now the moment is for us to be careful with everything that we're going through. Amen. If the brethren wants, you can now open the microphone and greet one another. And tomorrow, once again, at 7.30, we'll be present here. Tomorrow, at 8 o'clock in the morning, we have Sunday school. The brethren that can watch on YouTube. And at night, we're going to be here together at 7.30. Peace of the Lord, Jesus. Paz, Senhor, irmão. Amém. Pastor Queridão, forte abraço. Amém.